Yeah. Live from the NJ.com studio comes the only weekly TV podcast you'll need, where a lofty critic squares off with an obsessed superfan on everything from highbrow drama to lowbrow reality. The cocktail shaker is ready. Prepare for your TV hangover. Now, your hosts, Vicki Hyman and Aaron Medley. Hey everyone, welcome to TV Hangover. I am Erin Medley alongside Vicki Hyman. Vicki. Hi everybody. Vicki was on vacation last I week. I was. And now she's back, so we're back. Uh, don't forget to follow us on social media, at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore meds, and at Vicki High, V-I-C-K-I-H-Y. We also have an email address, TV Hangover Show, at njadvancemedia.com. Send us an email. Or tweet us. That's probably better. Vicky, I was actually speaking of Twitter. I was mm-hmm. thinking of t- changing my Twitter handle. You don't want the underscore in there anymore? It's not necessarily the underscore. Which but is kind of like it's, dumb. Well, okay. <laughs> First of all, when I created my Twitter handle, it was in back in the day. 2000 and... I think eight. Eight. Or nine. One of the two. I think it was eight. Um, I was trying to keep it real short. E underscore men's, mm-hmm. but I should have gone for Aaron Medley. You but at that time, is there now an Aaron Medley? Yes. Oh, and at that time, Twitter was like people didn't understand Twitter and they didn't really know what it was, and everyone had their fun handles. Mm-hmm. But then as it um, as more professionals started to use it, they were taking their names, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh shoot, I missed that. So what if I go with at the real Aaron M? I guess that would work. It's longer. It is. It is longer. But I just hate the. I hate the underscore. I hate the underscore too. But, so you're the real, and who is the unreal one? Who is, who is the this other one? Who is or, who is she? I think the other Aaron Medley hasn't tweeted in a long time. All right, listeners, go to Twitter and just hate tweet this Aaron Medley and just say, look, that's bullying. That's bullying. Okay, my, my friend Ruby, who joined Twitter very, very early, her handle is at Ruby, and she has like <gasps> seriously gotten people like threatening her when she refuses to give up her Twitter handle. Okay, don't threaten anyone, but just say, hey, look at Aaron Medley. There's another uh, Aaron. She's at E underscore meds. She tweets all the time. We love her. Can she please have at Aaron Medley? That's nice. That's yeah. not bull. All right, let's do that. We're going we're gonna <laughs> to make an okay. effort. Okay, is it August? Do we have no television to talk about? Oh, my God. There's no TV <laughs> on right now. We have nothing to talk about. Um, the one thing that is on that I just can't get into, The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Our bread and butter. Our Your bread and my butter. My bread and butter. There are three. <sighs> right now, we have three franchises of The Real Housewives on. Actually, four. Real Housewives of New York, which has been excellent this season. Mm-hmm. Real Housewives of Orange County, which has also had its share of drama. Real Housewives of Melbourne, which no one watches except okay, for me. I'm like, uh. And the Real Housewives of New so Jersey. So tell me, what makes a Real Housewives franchise excellent? What are I, the elements? I'll tell you what it is. It's drama that is relevant to the current season, which is what Real Housewives of New Jersey is lacking. So on Real Housewives of New York City, for example, we started the season out with everyone hating Dorinda Medley's. We're not related, but it's awesome. (laughs) Everyone hating Dorinda Medley's uh, boyfriend, right? That's how we started the season. Then it progressed. Now we have Countess Luann is engaged to a guy who used to date two of the other housewives. Inbreeding. It's disgusting. But now they're engaged, and that's the drama where, uh, that we have now. And Bethany has photos of him kissing another oh woman really? after the engagement. Absolutely. Really? So tonight's the season finale. I cannot wait. And then we get a three-part reunion. So it's real drama that's happening now. Whereas on Real Housewives of New Jersey, I think we both agree that they are manufacturing drama from something that happened Four years ago. It actually feels very similar to me to Real Housewives Season 2, where you had Danielle on the show, who's given it her best shot. Um, but, like, at that point, she... Everybody hated Danielle, and there was really, and they were never friends with her to begin with. So there was really no reason for her to be on the show with these other ladies, um, dredging up the drama from the previous season. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, she left after the second season. They got Melissa on, which is fairly authentic drama. Right now, Siggy Flicker and Dolores Catania are the two new housewives this season, and so far um, they have been very limited um, in their storylines. To Siggy's dealing with like her kids, you know, she's having issues with what her is kids. Siggy's storyline. 
fine. Um, Dolores, you know, she's trying to get her husband. She's trying to stand on her own two feet, and yet she wants her husband to Not renovate her house. standing on her own two feet. Now, Siggy went on a little bit of a tear on Sunday night, um, responding to people who are like, oh, you just want dark jersey. And, I'm, you know, I'm bringing, you know, I'm, th- this what is the a happier. What the dark night. jersey? Well, I thought that was very interesting. Um, you know, when Teresa was Wait, hanging that's from, what Siggy said. That's what Siggy Twitter, says. You want dark you jersey. You want dark jersey. Got this it. isn't dark jersey anymore, so, like, have some have some fun. This is more lighthearted. Um, but yeah, I mean, like as disgusting as I often think that dark jersey can be, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I prefer it to. I don't light need jersey. to watch normal people sit around and watch paint dry. That is what Manzoed with Children is for. That, That's what a half hour show is for. No, you know what that's for? That's for my everyday life. Like, if I (laughs) want to see people with no drama doing absolutely nothing, I come to work. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't (laughs) need that on my TV. Mm -hmm. It is a waste of an hour of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I understand before you guys start sending us tweets that we don't have to watch. Vicky has to watch. I do. It's her job, and I have to watch so that I can complain about it. Yeah, you have to. And also, I watch all the Real Housewives franchises, and I'm not going to stop now, but it's just... When I tell you, if anyone out there has ever watched Real Housewives of Melbourne, they produce the show a lot differently in Australia. It's Mm -hmm. slower paced. The scenes are really long. They're Mm -hmm. like 10 minute scenes. And it's not as interesting on a consistent basis. But when there is something happening, it's good. It's better than New Jersey. They can cut out 50% of Real Housewives of Melbourne, and you'd still have more interesting scenes than what's been happening on Real Housewives of New Jersey. You know, did we get a chance to um, discuss the Jacqueline Teresa fight on the podcast yet? No. Because it was interesting. It was the one, you know, drama thing that happened so far this season, mm-hmm. but it just didn't even feel right to me because uh, Teresa comes over to Jacqueline's house and they're going to like have a nice friendly dinner over a lot of prosciutto and mozz, right. um, which looked really excellent. It was the most interesting thing about the entire episode. Mm-hmm. I really Probably wanted. from Market Basket. Yes, <laughs> um, probably. Um, but it, it like immediately just, just... It just descended into screaming and screeching, and then it was over. And it was, like, two minutes long. Right. And I was like, what just happened? Who's Well, here's my question for you. Whose side were you on? This is is actually very interesting. Uh This is very interesting. Because you know that Uh I come down pretty hard on Teresa as as a character on the show. You're not a tree hugger. I'm not a tree hugger generally on the show, because I think she's a hard time taking responsibility for her actions. Yes. um, On the show. Um, Because I also have to cover her as, as a as a. Yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah, as a, yeah. As a public to answer persona. the question, okay. Hyman. I was sort of on Teresa's side on this one. No, and I've always sort of like liked Jacqueline, um, but it seemed like Jacqueline is on this show. She knows, you know, what side her bread is buttered on, yeah. and she has to just go for it. And she is there to create <sighs> trouble from the outset. And she seemed to be the more aggressive person in this. Did you? Were you on Teresa's side on this? No, I'm Orion Jacqueline's side. I would, I, well, first, neither side. Because nonsense. But if I had to choose a side, I would be on Jacqueline's side. Really? And I'll tell you why. Because Teresa is the one, I think, who went there. When she said that she tried to deflect and she said to Jacqueline, well, I didn't bring up your bankruptcy, but you just brought it up. But it was before then because Jacqueline was needling her from the very beginning of the conversation saying like, oh, I don't know why, you know. you know, But Teresa said time, my real every- friends knew it was happening, yes. so I guess there was a problem. But see, it's those little it's, digs. I those thought it was Jacqueline's things. dig. I thought I Jacqueline know. was very clearly from the outset just ready but to start that something. that is the difference. And I think that is that is Jacqueline's problem with Teresa. Jacqueline is going to put it out there. Her cards are like, you can read her cards. She she is just telling you what hand she has. Whereas Teresa just wants to needle you just a little, just make a little dig. I think, I think, and never really come fully clean about it. And I think that's what annoys Jacqueline so much is she just wants her to be completely honest. And Teresa doesn't do that. Ever. So the thing when you say that she's needling, that Teresa's needling, I don't think Teresa um like has it in her Disagree. to like know how to uh, she does. to put it out there. Yeah, I think she does. All she does is deny, deny, deny. No. She denies that's, her, what, that's what her reflection is. She denies means. while also uh rolling some insults your way. 
I, I don't agree. I, like, well, I happen to think that I was more well, my on Teresa's real, side than well, Jacqueline. Well, my one. real friends knew what was happening. Uh, excuse me? You guys I, are I just, best I, friends. What are you it talking started before about? Then. Jacqueline came out of the gate now, I will, ready to start. I will ready to agree rumble. with you that Jacqueline was wrong for calling Joe and like, oh, that absolutely. was like, yes, not, that was dumb. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was, I was like, all right, you've kind of lost. That's why I say neither because they're both wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I had to choose Yeah, that side. was ridiculous. And it's like, I, you know, you also have to wonder, I always try to take a step back and think, you know, obviously this is all very, very fake. Mm-hmm. But I try to think, okay, so if Jacqueline had to call Joe, that means Joe really had to be expecting a phone call. No. Yes. Because no, because if he was expecting it, the camera would have been there. No, because then that would have been too obvious. No. But oh, like this show Joe, was trying to hit on and subtlety. And it's like, oh, look, it's Jacqueline. No. Oh, no, 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 no. I think, I think he that, I don't think he was. what would have happened? The scene would have come to a screeching halt. No, why? Had, had she called him and... He would have been on another Why call, wouldn't he pick or he up? would have been in the bathroom. There are many reasons why people Vicky, don't pick up the phone. Vicky, are you kidding me? Yes, you in kidding this me? day and age, absolutely. If we were talking about two thousand seven, take your phone to the bathroom with you. Uh, I know a lot of people he who could have been in the bathroom. bathroom. I mean, God knows what no, he could have been doing. I, he was right there. No, I I disagree. If anything, the phone they called from was probably a production phone, so there's absolutely no way he wouldn't have answered mm-hmm. it. But I don't think he necessarily expected the call because I watch a lot of reality TV shows, and when a call is expected that there is a camera there there was no camera there hmm. there was no camera it was just on speaker I don't uh, a one-sided speaker on speaker phone oh. it was on speaker phone <laughs> Sorry. Exactly. I think actually my favorite moment from from the from the entire season so, so far is when Teresa is shocked, shocked that Jacqueline is on speakerphone on I Real Housewives of New Jersey. I look, they, they need to bring it next week. They're heading to Vermont. Where are they going? Oh, they're going to Vermont. Where right. I was. Where you were last they, week? They let me in in, in the state. Um, ratings not good. No, not shocker. Good. I mean, this is a show that was once the the juggernaut of the Real Housewives. Um, uh, universe. It was. Well, Atlanta. No, Atlanta eventually re- took it, but like right. at, at, at some point, I think it was like the second or third season. I think third season. Well, there were like only three a couple million, options. Three million viewers, and now they are not even pulling in Where are they? Um, you know, two million a week. They're like 1.5. Mm. In yeah. the demo or just overall? In the demo. In the demo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, look, they need to step it up. Step it up. I mean, people are watching The Last Ship and Basketball Wives. Oh, I watch Basketball Wives LA. I told you that's where the drama is. You're missing out. Shoot. I, mean, I was actually a little surprised that The Night Of is actually doing better. Not that you know I love The Night Of, but yeah. The Night Of is doing better on a premium cable channel. Um, I believe it now because the buzz is there. Yeah. The hype is there and people know they have to watch it we'll The Night Of. We will be talking about that later. We will be talking about that later. But before we get to The Night Of, uh, a show came back for its mid-season premiere. That would be Fear of the Walking Dead. A show which, did I ever tell you I watched the first Six. I got to the part. That in the, was the first season. The season first, one yeah, where the um, the National Guard shows up or whoever they were. Oh, that was like episode like three or four. Oh, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it felt like six, right? It really did. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe I didn't get that far. So mid season premiere, mid season premiere of the second season, and you know I go all I'm all over the map with Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, I did not like the first season at all. Um, you know. Fear the Walking Dead was supposed to be sort of an origin story, and it was supposed to grapple with different things than The Walking Dead Mm -hmm. AMC's Juggernaut Mm -hmm. um, does. And it did it for, like, two episodes. And then it was pretty much just, you know, kind of The Walking Dead. Right. Um, And then they went on a boat. And I really enjoyed the boat. Okay. Um, Are they no longer on the boat? They're no longer on the boat. Spoiler alert. Okay, so, of course, like, the thing that, for me, is most frustrating about the entire Walking Dead, (laughs) the entire Walking Dead, um... Um, genre is that they they find a place to go and you know that eventually all hell is going to break loose and they're going to destroy this wonderful thing they've, they've built and they manage to do it in like one episode la- at, the, at the first half of the season. Mm-hmm. It's like they had this wonderful ranch that was protected self-sustaining and of course um, uh, one of the characters um, the former uh, Salvadoran torture guy turned barber um, I can't remember his name right now um blows it all up but apparently doesn't die because he's gonna be back in the next season which doesn't make any sense okay and so now they're all out um they're in three separate groups and the premiere pretty much focused on nick who is the recovering drug addict and it was a very deep dive into Mm -hmm. nick and his why he got like you know you know how he ended up in in drugs and and it, it actually 
gave some interesting perspective into him because you find out about his father died suddenly while he was in rehab leading to probably a further spiral and how he has issues but it was it was an interesting episode but it's just people trying to survive when society has collapsed and there are zombies after you and it just doesn't feel very different from the, the walking, walking dead. dead do you think the characters are the problem because my what i found was i wasn't really interested in in any of their stories it, it was a problem i mean i i do not find the recovering dope fiend very interesting and mm-hmm. that was kind of the whole first season where he's trying to get off drugs now he's off drugs so there ain't no more drugs right um and i don't think he's a very interesting character and even though they're trying to give you all this backstory is like okay fine um i'm a little bit interested in madison and they've been hinting that she's got some sort of very interesting past haven't seen yet don't do not care about the other kids especially chris who is turned into some sort of like a uh, nihilistic um survivalist uh without any morals whatsoever and so his father like went off with him because he can't be trusted around everybody else and then they killed off i thought the salvadoran guy was 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 very interesting the guy they just killed him off but they didn't kill him off i don't even know what you're talking about you know, the guy but sure. the guy who blew up the ranch last oh. the first half of the season i don't know so how many episodes is is fear of the walking dead for one season I think it's like 16 episodes oh like see that's another eight, problem seven and seven Too many. i don't know too many you know, know that's how i felt about the walking dead as i got further into like seasons five and six or whatever there are too many damn episodes i've been okay i mean like they do it in the chunks and i like the chunks but it's just and 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 the the creators or um i'm not sure if the creators are am i think the amc said oh yeah we do a third walking dead if they pitched us a good idea well, oh, how about please. pitching them a good idea in the first place agreed because i mean like actually no it was it was a good idea like how this all happened society collapsing right. but it's they did just another survival story right Exactly. Well, I know The Walking Dead returns in October, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I still have to finish season six. <laughs> I still have you like do. eight or nine you episodes do. You're left. Almost there. I'm almost there. We'll see how it goes. Um, so switching gears from uh, Fear the Walking Dead, let's talk a little bit about The Night Of, which is a show I think we both really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's heading into its season finale on Sunday. We're seven episodes in. We still don't know whether or not Nas did it. Mm -hmm. But we do know that uh, Nas has changed for the worse. Well, this is interesting. Did he change for the worse or was it always inside him? We don't know. We don't know if he he killed her. Did he really change for the worse? Maybe this is who he has always been. And I think one of the most brilliant things about this show is that um, it sort of upends your, you know, storytelling expectations in that you start the show and he seems like a nice kid. He seems to have gotten into a really bad situation. Um, and then you realize, well, we actually don't really know very much about this kid. You're making a lot of assumptions about him. And as we've seen him um, do what he has to do in prison to survive, you're wondering, well, maybe that was there the entire time. Right. I think that one of the things that this show has done well is that they've really um, they've really highlighted how perception is oftentimes reality. So in the beginning, yeah, we thought Nas was a great kid because that's all we saw. Like he was, you know, a typical college kid, Mm -hmm. wanted to go to a party. He tutored basketball players Mm -hmm. or whatever they were. Um, and Or dealt them Adderall. Or (laughs) as we found out. Um, Or, uh, you know, the the young woman who was murdered. You know, she's a party girl. She Mm -hmm. does drugs. Or, um, you know, Box, he's a great detective and he really enjoys his job. And then we see in this episode where he's kind of like, oh, I've been doing this. I've been a detective for 19 years. I've been a police officer for 30 years. And now I'm retiring. And, like, what the hell have I really Mm -hmm. done? Um, So... I, I really enjoy that aspect of the show. Um, let's talk about Box a little bit. Okay, because that, um, that, that was one of the most interesting things that has happened so far this season. To, to those of you, I mean, I, I, I don't even know, do we need to tell people what happened? Yeah, kind of just quickly. So, you know, in this episode, we find out that Box is retiring mm-hmm. after 30 years uh, as a police officer. Um, we also find out that he took some evidence from the scene. Nas's asthma, asthma inhaler. Nas's asthma inhaler, which he gave back to him. We saw mm-hmm. a flashback. 
uh, when he gave that to him in the because prison. Because he wasn't able to breathe. Because he wasn't able to breathe. And that sort of set up this whole question, I think, for me as a viewer. Like, did he do that because he has doubts about Nas's guilt or innocence? And he knows that by doing so, breaking the chain, the, the chain of custody, yeah. that that would call into question other aspects of the investigation and maybe Nas would get off? Or did he do it just because Nas was having trouble breathing and, you know, he thought that was the right thing to do? Or well, the third, the third, the third possibility is that it, as as they said in the show, it didn't fit the fact the that it didn't fit the narrative, right. and he wanted to take it, which makes you think, well, you've got maybe not Mark Furman, but you know, another crooked cop, right? And so he isn't the um, you know thorough investigator that we thought that he was, or he is. Yeah. But like <laughs> I said, uh, you know, it's all about the the perception. Mm-hmm. It, um, you know, that's what we would think he would be, but maybe this is the way that he gets things mm-hmm. done, which is why when he uh, is about to go to his retirement party. Oh, I love that moment. And he, like, pauses outside of the mm. door. You don't really know you what's don't about know, to happen. You don't know what door it is. You hear a little bit of Gloria Gaynor, and he just stops, and the camera's on him sort of from behind him or to right. the side of him, I think. And he takes this, like, very deliberate pause. And the ca- oh, it's wonderful. And then he's like, okay, going to go in. Right. And then it's his, 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 it's his retirement, his retirement party. party with his golf club. It just says so much with so little. It does. What about the scene with Nas's mother in the bathroom? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, how often do you see also, how often do you see like two people of color just have, two women of color having a conversation that isn't about, I don't even know. Like, it, it, was, it just struck me as like really rare mm-hmm. to see, to see that particular scene between those two women. And then when um, Chandra, is that her name? Chandra? Right? I can't remember her name. I, I think like, so. The actress's uh, name is Porna. When she <laughs> says, you know, an animal did this after they showed uh, images of... Oh, the mother. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. The lawyer. No, didn't the mother say? No, the lawyer said an animal did this. And the mother said, did I raise, did I an, raise an animal? An animal? Mm-hmm. Which was so yeah. poignant. And it's like... And she had no answer for yeah. her. And then, well, she also moves forward to sort of touch on the woman. And, and she backs, backs off. Oh. Right. It, I mean, it, this show is great with its storytelling mm-hmm. and uh, cinematography is awesome uh wh- how did you feel this is what i think was the most controversial point of that episode oh, when mm. the f- lawyer whose yes. name we think is shadra <laughs> uh kissed nas yeah I, I didn't buy that um didn't like it mm-hmm. um i can understand how um i just i think she's too smart to do what she did mm. um so i did i did not that's like the one thing i really did not buy as a character, we've established that she is too professional and too smart to get sucked in and to do to actually. I mean, I can see her entertaining the notions. He is right. a very handsome man. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, I know, he, you, I know oh. you think so. <laughs> Woo, let's take a second. From my professional mm-hmm. perspective, mm-hmm. I would not have kissed him. No. However, if we're talking about Aaron, the TV watcher, yeah. I was right there with you, girl, because he is so hot, especially since he shaved, shaved his head, and now he has his tattoos going. He got he really? built up a little bit. Really? I'm like, you uh, are amazing. Mm. All right, side note, uh, aside yeah. over, but Didn't yes. Didn't buy it, but then, hot. of course, I have to sit there and wonder, like, there are so many things that come back. Um, I, can't wait, I can't wait to see how this is going to play out. That's not... The thing that I also think is amazing about the show is that it has these wonderful actors in these small... I, w- I don't want to say that they're... Um, they're not inconsequential. They're or not like... inconsequential roles, but they're like... They're, they're really good actors doing everything they can with these very, very small roles. Right. Um, I really loved it. Um, I think it was in the third episode, maybe, where um, uh, John Turturro's character, the lawyer, brings in the pathologist who's taking pictures all over the house. Yes. It was a very long scene. And it's helping establish, you know, again, perspective, different ways of looking at things. But he spent a long time taking all those photos. You're like, oh, my God, what's going on here? And then he comes back, and he has all these different perspectives about, like, what happened? What he could see, mm-hmm. and, and the back and forth with the with the, um, with the uh, prosecutor. prosecutor. Was awesome. Yes, um, I just want to note the lawyer's name is Chandra. So okay. we, I got a name right. Yes. Look at very me. good. Thank you. The, the one time. Um, sorry. Heading into the finale, where do you think we're going? Because there's only so. Here's my fear. I don't want it to be like The Good Wife, where I feel like there are a lot of ends that need to be wrapped up, and then the finale comes and like nothing's wrapped up. Um, I'm not saying I need to necessarily know what happens in Nas's life ten years from now, no, but no. I need one. I need I need to know. Bless you, producer Alyssa. In case you heard that sneeze, um, I need to know whether or not Nas did it. 
I need to know whether or not Nas is a good person. And those are two, Those, I mean, like, he could have done it and, I mean, he can't do it and be a good person, but can he still be a sympathetic person? I don't know. I mean, he did take a, a very bad mix of drugs between his asthma and everything. Right. I mean, like, who knows what, I mean, like, he could have been out of his mind. I don't think he did it. Honest, I still watching, I don't think he did it. Do you think he did it? I don't know whether he did or not. And that is one of the best things about the show. I really don't know. But for me, I'm wondering, do I even need to know what happened? Oh, hell yeah. I because need to know. isn't the show also about... I need to know why, too. Can't, I mean, like, I, I think one of the things they're raising in the show in a very wire, wire-esque fashion is, like, does the criminal justice system create criminals? Yes. Um, so <laughs> if they don't show you whether he did it or not... No, I need to know. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you... Well, wait. But the two things. One, I need to know because hopefully HBO will do the right thing and not bring the show back. I don't think they're going to. Good. Perfect. Then I definitely need to know. I need closure. I need closure. How about that? I need closure. Maybe I don't need to know, but I need to feel satisfied that I didn't watch this for no no good reason. Are you going to be pissed off if it turns out he didn't and he gets off or vice versa? Neither. Okay. Nope, I won't be pissed off at either one. How about the, the one last thing that we I, we have to mention is that while Nas may or may not have killed uh, what's her name, he definitely was an accessory to murder in this episode. I actually didn't have much of a problem with that. What, <laughs> Vicky? All he was doing was getting in an oh hand. That's yeah, all that's he all was he was doing. doing while his friend uh, uh, what's that guy's name? What, what, what what's that character's name? The Michael K. Michael K. Williams, K. Williams character. We can't see. We're not good with this, guys. Oh, Freddie. Mm-hmm. While Freddie murdered the other guy, he slit his throat mm-hmm. in the TV room. Mm-hmm. But Nas was the distraction. Mm-hmm. Ex- he was an accessory to murder. Yeah, well. Also, did you? no one else caught this, or I haven't seen anything. Did you notice in the scenes for next week's episode, or this week's episode, um, he has a neck tattoo. Who has a neck tattoo? Nas. Are you sure that's not just the scar from where he got mm. ki- he got he got nicked in the shower by the guy who was threatening him who ended up dying? No, it looked really? gigantic and it stuck out over his collar. I did not notice that. I thought I saw that. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But the tattoos, Nas, like chill out. Yeah, I was okay with the drugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh Although we did not need another extended scene of the. Oh my gosh, of the vagina drug smuggling. Yes. Without Kleenex. Never um, need to see that again in my life. Yeah, although I, it was very effective because, like, is he going to get caught? I mean, because that, that's another right. I mean, that, that's another thing. They've also planted that, you know, he could, um, he could, he might not, might done it, might not have done it, right. and he could get off, but then he could be, you know, he could For get drug else. smuggling. Which I had said a few weeks prison. ago, and I said that would make, that would also annoy me because yeah. I think that they've so been telegraphing. They would, they, because they've telegraphed that too much. Hmm. I, my dream scenario is he gets off and then his life is just ruined outside of prison. That's your dream scenario. That's yes. so nice. That would be satisfying. <laughs> I would take that. All right. So we'll have to see what happens on the finale of The Night Of. If you've been watching and you have something to say, tweet us at TV Hangover Show. Now, speaking of The Night Of, which we would say is arguably one of the best shows of the summer. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the best and worst shows of summer 2016. Because I hope this doesn't get repetitive because... Okay, go on. I don't think it will. I have two on each side of my list. Okay. Two best, two worst. And I know one of them you definitely don't watch. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm 100% sure. Love and Hip Hop? No. Okay. I would never put that on any best worst list. You were telling list. me how good it was. Oh, no. Love and Hip Hop is terrible. Okay. No, it was it was, <laughs> it was Love and Hip Hop. Basketball it. Wives. Basketball Wives, LA. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. So, Vicky, what would you say is one of the best shows of summer 2016 well i mean obviously the night of Agreed. is 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 probably and i would say it edges out my other one which is stranger things so you would say the night of is the best show of the summer i would say it is the best show of the summer i think it does everything just spectacularly and it's, it's really tough um I am not, I, I, I really love Stranger Things. It was a little harder for me to get into Stranger Things than it was than it was for The Night Of. But I just think this The Night Of is operating, uh, like, at such a high level. Um, I have to give it my favorite, my, my, my absolute favorite. Wow. So I have Stranger Things on my list. Mm-hmm. Those are my two, The Night Of and Stranger Things. But I would say Stranger Things, for me, squeaked past The Night Of. Why? To be my number one. I think Stranger Things had a nostalgia factor. That it also just, had Winona Ryder, but she was Sorry. the worst part. <laughs> she, if I could, 
excise her from that show, I would. Um, no, it had a nostalgia factor that I really enjoyed. It brought me to a, it makes me a little more happy than mm-hmm. the night of. Like the night of, I enjoy because it's great television, but it doesn't make me happy. Mm-hmm. Um, it, quite the opposite, actually. Uh, Stranger Things both made me happy. It it was intriguing, um, and it was interesting. And I mm-hmm. thought it was well produced. I love the cinematography on that show as well. Uh, so I would give it to Stranger Things. Can I say one thing about those two shows? Yeah. First of all, one of the things that was that is that I think enhance my experience is that in this day and age where you have all these blogs and everybody like reporting this is going to happen next season this is the guest star these just sort of like burst on the scene you didn't really know anything about them I mean like you knew in the I mean they deliberately did not give you very many details about in the night of you knew it was going to be a look at the criminal justice system through a guy who's accused of killing somebody right. you didn't really know that like much about tra- it uh, t- you were trailers like, yeah you were not beaten over the head like this is what you have to expect and that is so rare these days and it really made the show seem so I mean they were both very very fresh but right. like just incredibly fresh to watch them I agree such a great experience I agree with you um, let's go back to that no more internet <laughs> you're fired <laughs> um, I would also say that what we can't forget is both of these shows were only eight episodes mm-hmm. yes and I think that has a lot to do with it um, well a lot to do with their success and um, I think people felt feel that they're accessible. It's like, let's say you missed the first four weeks of the night of. I mean, you, you only have to watch those four, and then there are only four more. Like, so at any point you could really catch up. Whereas with some other shows that are maybe interesting, but a full twenty two episodes mm-hmm. or maybe a sixteen episodes, like the The Walking Dead, it's a it's a burden to mm-hmm. kind of catch up to everyone else. And of and course, with, with only that. eight episodes, there's just no flab in these shows. And there's, there's no, no flab. flab. It's straight to the point. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so let's talk about worst. Okay. Name one of your worst. Shows. Oh, did you get both of your both what? your favorites? Oh, you had more than two. No, no, I'm doing. I just, oh, yeah, so the Night of and Stranger, Stranger, Stranger okay. Things. Yeah. So the worst. Okay, well, obviously, obviously, oh, what the is worst it? is Unreal. Ah, uh, obviously, the worst. Although I have to say that I have other shows listed as my worst, but they're so bad I didn't finish watching them. I finished <laughs> watching Unreal. <laughs> we did. So we what did does it say about all Unreal? Of that time. We did invest that ten hours of our time. Yes. with a lot of fluff and and no substance and awful all around. I mean, I don't even know what else there is to say about Unreal, except that second season was yeah. Unreal. And that if they don't get it together for season three, <laughs> I'm out. Are you, You're out, too. Oh, no. I mean, I'm, I'm probably still going to watch it. Because it's interesting <laughs> from a television perspective. This is what Fine. I do for a living. Fine. So I probably will continue to watch it. But I will be switching to hate watching much more actively. Yes. I was, like, rooting for it for, like, half or, or three quarters of the season. And then I just was like, Gave up I on it. You. I agree. I hate you. All right. So what were your other worst? Um, well, these are all shows that, like, I didn't even finish watching. Okay. That, mostly shows that I was excited about. Wayward Pines. Let's throw oh, that out there. Oh, my gosh. I, how, I long, how long did you get through? Half of the first episode. Oh, my gosh. Well, season. okay, I, I lasted three episodes. Oh, I can't even believe Everything you did that. Everything that was so good about the first season. And, again, it was, like, a show where you didn't really know. I mean, like, yes, the books were there. Right. But it was another show that just sort of burst onto the scene. And it was exciting. It was genre mixing. It was mixing. different. It was different. It's like maybe this is the same thing we're talking about with The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. It's right. like, you know, it's kind of the same thing. But it took away everything that made the first season so good. There was no surprise. But but this is also a show that they that they touted as, as a limited a series. Limited series. Like, oh, this did really well. And then they said, oh, no, it did so well. Let's bring it back for season two. Of course, two. what they said was, if we find a good story to tell. Well, you didn't. Bull. What else? Bull. Um, let's see. Um, you know, I, I really did not enjoy Brain Dead. Did you continue watching Brain no, Dead? No, one, ep- one episode. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I got a, an episode and a half. Um, and, um, yeah. I got one for you. Okay. Another season two, Zoo on CBS. Oh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I was all in for season one. I, 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 I watched and reviewed, like, the first two or three episodes, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is good. I can see why people like it. I ain't gonna watch it. So I watched the entire first season. I was totally into it. And then season two, you could tell that they were like, O-S-H-I-T. They brought us back for a season two. We did not think this far ahead. What can we do? And what they did was everything. They threw everything. It was like an Unreal, 
It, well, it's still on. But it was like an Unreal where they didn't have any fully fleshed out ideas, but they were like, well, we can do all of these things. Let's just do them. So now we're in the first so, season. The, so Zoo, Zoo is, is about, about, I was going to say, Zoo is about an animal mutation. So now all of the animals are standing up to humans and rebelling, and they're all working together against the, against the human race. So these four or five uh you know this ragtag team they go out to save the world it's a ridiculous premise um but it was good enough for season one now in season two the mutation is now called the ghost gene and you know what vicky every almost everyone has the ghost gene so one day humans humans had the ghost gene so we can turn into crazed monsters and go around and and, and, and kill people. So is this like a, a gloss on the zombie show? No. You're not a zombie. Okay. You're still alive. You're just now like an animal. You behave like an animal. And you go after humans and kill them. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Also, the the, the ragtag team out to save the world, they, they live on a plane? There's like a plane flying around. And it's huge. And it has like a... a a laboratory and cars and they always keep the, the cargo door open and I'm like I don't think in you can plane? yes <laughs> yes I'm like I don't think that's like a aerodynamic thing. like I don't know I'm not I'm unsure of how this that's works a physics thing I yeah, like that that's my technical <laughs> terminology so the show is totally off its rocker I'm still watching because I just want to see how they're going to wrap this up I can't imagine that it'll come back for a third season I'm sorry I'm writing um, down I don't think that's a physics thing <laughs> Please quote me on that okay. one. Then they're going to use that if there is a season three. That's going to be used in the promos, like mm-hmm. NJ.com. I don't, I don't think, think that's, that's a physics, physics thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Zoo. But the difference between Zoo and Unreal is that I don't think anyone on Zoo takes itself serious, like mm-hmm. takes the show seriously. What's the actors CBS? don't. <laughs> CBS doesn't. The writers don't. So it's okay. Whereas Unreal, they really thought they were doing something, mm-hmm. and that's the problem. Um, so those are our best and worst summer shows. Uh, of course, Big Brother's always going to be on my list of best. <gasps> but we won't have to talk about that because Vicky is no longer. No, I can't. I mean, it's not like Matchelor in Paradise where it's just funny. It's just ridiculous and funny. I mean, Big Brother, I've, I've tried because we had that guy, Polly from New Jersey. Oh, on. he turned out to be a misogynist. Yeah, I know. A, and I just, a, a I, chauvinist pig and like the too, worst. It's too many hours. Too no, many it's hours. not. It's only three hours a week. Only three hours a week. <laughs> Except when they throw in a random Friday episode like last week. And then it's four hours a week. <sighs> the commitment is there. Um, all right. Let's take a listen to a little bit of, uh, Vicky just mentioned it, Bachelor in Paradise. Now I'm worried about Kayla and Jared being the next Jade and Tanner. It's a nightmare scenario. My biggest fear is that he leaves engaged to Kayla. <laughs> Kayla may be like making out with him, but I know him better than her. I can make out with his mind, and I know how to get a reaction out of him. Like they're having a super hard time with you being with something else. Ashley said, "Watch out for Kayla. She is in love with you. Oh, she is. is love with me. I need to talk to her. If you were honestly here to meet someone else, then yeah. you should focus on that. I know, but there's nobody right now, so you're gonna sabotage everyone else. I wanna scratch her eyes out." All right, Vicky. So, of course, that was a montage of our girl, Ashley I. Ashley I. Kennedy. I. Kennedy of Wayne. Of Wayne, New Jersey. She came in like a steam train last week. So she's the Jacqueline. She, no. <laughs> I, she, I, duh. Not a fair comparison. But she came in like a steam train last week to Paradise. Uh, of Still in love with Jared from, I think, Caitlin Bristow's season of. Who she liked in the first sh- in the, in the second, second season, season of Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, Paradise, Jared has zero interest in dating Ashley. Well, they're although, apparently very good friends. But they're very good friends. Um, and so she actually did not get a rose in Monday night's episode. So she was gone. She's, she's already gone? She was. But oh. as she's leaving Paradise, she decides that she's going to storm back in there. And she's going to tell Jared, I am over you. That two-second ride in the limo, I no longer like you. I am here to find love. Will you guys have me back? And that's what she did. And everybody said, sure. So she overruled Chris Harrison? She overruled the rules of Bachelor in Paradise. There are no rules on this show. That's what I don't like. There are no rules on this This show. This is true. You can do whatever you want in Paradise. So Ashley I is back. Now, 
I have to set you up. We're going to do a Bachelor in Paradise quiz. Okay. Which it, I deliberately have not been watching. She hasn't been watching. It's going to be, it's an Ashley I themed quiz. I have to set you up and let you know that Jared uh, has feelings for Kayla, who you may remember was on Ben's season of The Bachelor. I don't remember that. I don't watch any of The Bachelor or Bachelorette. <laughs> She's the, the daughter of the I've toy watched. maker. I have no okay, idea what you're fine, talking about. Fine. Well, Jared has eyes for Kayla, and Ashley's main goal, although she claims to be over Jared, her goal is to break them up and, you know, make them so miserable. So she still loves Jared. She still loves in quotes. Air quotes. Yes, Jared. All right, so here's the quiz. Are you ready? Yes. Question number one. Ashley claims the only reason she's okay with Jared dating Kayla is because A, she knows him better than her, she being Ashley. Mm -hmm. B, she knows how to get a reaction out of him. Or C, she knows how to stimulate him correctly. Well, I mean, I don't think she does know Jared at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And, yeah, I I go for one. You're going to go for A. She knows him better than her. Yeah. Incorrect. Really? The correct answer is all of the above. Really? She said all those things. She knows him better than her. She knows how to get a reaction out of him. And she knows how to She hasn't got any reaction out of him him except, like, go away, woman. You are crazy. She is a little nutso. All right. Number two. Which of these phrases did Ashley use to describe Kayla? A, excuse the language, uh, she's a disloyal bitch. Hmm. B, she's a robot. Or C, she's a little piece of S-H-I-T. Well, and, 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 and D, all of the above, because now you got me freaked out from the last seat. I'm going to go for A. That is correct yet incorrect oh, because it's all of the above. All of the above. This is not fair. It's, it's not totally fair. fair. It's totally fair. So I was really right twice. It's totally fair. It's totally fair. Yeah, she called her all of these things in the span of like 10 minutes. Really? Some of them. I'm surprised she, it wasn't in the span of two minutes. Some of these to, to Jared directly. Mm-hmm. She is on. She is Because that's classy. That's what guys mode. like. That's what guys love. Yeah. Love the crazy girl who's not only in love with you for no good reason, Mm -hmm. but then is trash talking the girl that you are constantly making out with. Makes them hot. Makes them hot. (laughs) All right. Number three. Jared, on uh, in his one-on-one time with Kayla, says, A, when I'm with you, I'm only thinking about you. B, Ashley is a good friend and maybe one day we'll get together, but that day is not today. Or C, I'm unsure about my feelings for you. B, Ashley is a good friend and maybe one day we'll get together. And eh, that's uh, wrong. I thought he was like trying to goose the, you know. No, he said, when I'm with you, I'm only thinking about because you. Because his brain is so, so small. small. It can only do one thing at a time. One thing Ooh, at a time. burn. <laughs> Vicky, you know nothing there about There was no Jared. conviction in that. I'm burn. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, here's, he seems like a very nice guy. Here's a good one for you. While Kayla and Jared are making out in the lagoon, what does Ashley do? A. Cry. Sulk Cry. by the pool. Cry. B. Sulk at the bar. Or C. Sulk in a be- beach lounge. All of the above. Incorrect. Really? C. Really? She was sulking in the beach lounger. Okay. But that's not really fair. You know what? <laughs> We're lucky she wasn't like hiding behind a rock, that's true. looking at them making out. Oh, she did cry this episode, right? Cause she always cries. She always cries. I think she may have been crying, and she always wears that like industrial mascara. It never runs. It never runs. It never runs. All right. Next question: What does Ashley think Kayla has that she doesn't? What does Ashley think Kayla has I got it. that I got she it. doesn't? A beautiful hair b sex appeal or c a banging body i'm gonna go for b that is correct okay i i don't know why i think that actually um, claims that she's not sexy at all she has a beautiful hair kayla kayla well, no both of them do yeah. I, don't, I don't know kayla but kayla has gorgeous nice hair, hair. Um, very nice hair. i think ashley has see this is the problem and we can get into a whole other conversation this would be another she's show still a virgin ashley she's I? still a virgin okay. this is i still think a topic that ashley i is harsh on herself mm-hmm. 
she's a beautiful girl. She mm-hmm. has plenty of sex appeal, but she's so insecure in herself that she has to put down another woman in mm-hmm. order to make herself feel better. And I just don't think that's right. And, and that's, that's not probably very why sexy. she's and that's probably why she's single <laughs> and it's not very sexy. All right, final question here: If Jared and Kayla were to go. On a date. Oh, on oh, hold a date. on. Wait. Let me. All right. To the bathroom. No. <laughs> Got it. Okay. If Jared and Kayla were to go to the fantasy suite, what would happen to Ashley? According to Ashley. Okay. Okay. A. She would literally be murdered. Literally. Hold on. Is, is Chad be murdered. back or Chad? What was his name? <laughs> Chad. Who wants to be? Who wants <laughs> yes, to be murder everyone? Yes. <laughs> B. She would jump off a cliff face first or C she wouldn't care because Jared's heart is hers anyway I'm gonna go for D all of the above the answer is A (laughs) she would literally (laughs) literally literally be murdered so you literally. made up the jumping off a cliff face Absolutely, first? but it sounds like that's something she would say, <laughs> right? First. She did say she would die. That was, was also another. It was, a re- it was, it was good. It th- okay, so <laughs> I'd say, Vicky, I tricked you on the first two because mm-hmm. uh, they were all of the above. And then you got another one right. So you got three out of six. Which isn't bad. That's not bad. I've only ever watched one season of this. And I think you should be watching this season. You're really missing out. I kind of wish that, like, Ashley and – is it Chet or Chad? I always forget. Chad. 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 Chad's Ashley gone, Chad. I know. I wish that, you know, they, they had been there at the same time. I think that could have been fun. Yeah. I think it would have been a little much. Yeah. We can only take – us Bachelor in Paradise fans can only take so much. Okay. BIP. Hashtag BIP. BIP. B-I-P. Oh, Bachelor in Paradise. That is correct. All right. So that's going to do it for this episode of TV Hangover. Vicky and I will be back next week to talk about what – I don't know. Who knows? I Guys, give know. us some ideas. I mean, we're definitely going to talk about the night of season yes. finale. Anything else you want us to discuss, tweet us at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore meds for now, uh, and at Vicky High, V I C K I H Y. They can, they can tune in next week so they can find out whether you changed your Yes, that is the TBD. That is the mystery of this episode. <laughs>